Hey, it's Captain Mark Johnson, a.k.a. Hollywood, and we're here in Venice, Louisiana with the boys from Salt Strong, and we're going to talk today about pop and cork fishing for the big bull redfish that we catch this time of year here in Louisiana. Uh, in the world of pop and corks, all pop and corks are not created equal, and we're going to show you today a couple different types of pop and corks, how we rig pop and corks what kind of leaders we use for pop and corks, the length of leaders, and what has made the pop and cork special that you see so many of them today. For starters, in the old days, everybody had the pop and cork with the little green pencil in the top, and that still works today, and you still see them in the tackle stores. However, today, technology has changed, and what I've learned down here in my time in the bayou is that the trick to the pop and corks, all different ones, shapes, and sizes, is everybody now is trying to perfect the rattle. Not all rattles are the same. You're trying to mimic different kinds of bait. Down here in the bayou, they're looking at their mullet, they're looking at their pogies, things that are all surface feeding. So you can look at these corks. They might be same size floats. They might be different size leads. They use different types of plastic. Some of them have bendable wire leaders. Some of them are single strand wire. Some come with swivels on the end. Some without swivels, some use big beads, small beads. There are endless choices out there. So what we have found through trials and tribulations of being out here is that some of these corks here, a little more on the heavy duty side, treat us the best out here in big bull red country. All right, having bendable wire is an advantage over the single strand in some cases, just because you have some flexibility when big fish are busting. A lot of times too, the big red fish will eat this cork Sometimes the sharks eat it, the Jack Cravel eat it. And so at the end of the day, you seem to have a little more user friendly with the bendable wire versus the single strand wire. Price of corks, that's a big deal too. Some of these corks these days cost as much as eight, nine, ten dollars. Some of these corks are a little less fancy. They do catch just as many fish. Maybe they're two bucks. All right, so there's a price point concern as well as the quality of construction, as well as what kind of rattle they make. They're all different. So here, we're gonna take another here, a different design. This has more of the open top, where it's a little different bubble and splash sound versus the round egg shape almost, okay? They're almost identical in size, but different shape, different action on the surface. And again, a couple different manufacturers here. And uh, every day we see more and more companies are making these, more and more guides are making them. Everybody's trying to perfect you notice that difference? Can you hear that? It's different. And that's a big deal down here chasing these fish. So talking about the corks, what we found out here in the bayou is that we've had the best luck with this design right here. With the bendable wire, the big beads, heavier sinker, swivels on the end. This is pretty deluxe, pretty Gucci cork. These particular ones are made by a company called High Water Fishing Lures, and you buy these at most tackle shops here at the marina, at Venice Marina, Cypress Cove Marina, and again, $8, but it's worth it. You can argue which cork is better, right? It's like arguing Fords and Chevys. A lot of guys like the egg shape. A lot of guys like the concave shape. Me, personally, I think that we get more bang for your buck at action and water movement with this one here. I've caught plenty of fish on both. I throw both corks, but if I had to pick one, it would be the one with the con concave top. So now we got past what cork to get, now you want to know how to rig it. So before braided line came on the scene, we all used to just tie your cork to your mono and fish every day. When braided line showed up, we found that with a lot of casting, especially with maybe some less experienced anglers or whatnot, a lot of helicopter casting, the braided line, because it has no memory, was starting to get wrapped up and tangled in a lot of these corks on the land of the cast making it not fish right. So a couple years ago, we figured out that what we like to do when we rig these corks, when you're fishing with braid, is that we run a little buffer piece of some stiffer leader material. This particular stuff I use is made by Andy. All right, and again, we're in big fish country, so we're fishing 20 pound braid to call it 15 inches of 40 pound leader material tied to your swivel, heavy duty swivel on your heavy duty Gucci cork. And then we roll right into, believe it or not, a piece of 60. 
Okay, yes, you can fish lighter, but up here the water can be dirty and the fish are big, so why go lighter when you can go heavier? And when you're gonna grab that line around the boat with the big fish on the end, it's nice to put your hand around some 60. Gives you really good fish control, which is important for the safety of your angler, safety of you, and also for the better of the fish. Now, this up here, like I say, I got 15, 18 inches. It doesn't really matter how long it is, but you want probably at least six or eight inches just to help keep the braid from getting wrapped around this stuff on the cast. You don't want it too long because your knots here can sometimes be hanging up in the guides when you're casting. So we find that this right here, 15 to 18 inches, treats us the best. Now, on the money end, how long is your leader? This particular setup here, we call it two feet. Why is this two feet? Well, we were only fishing five feet of water. So depending on the depth you fish is obviously going to dictate how long your leader is. And when you're fishing our new favorite artificial, the Slam Shady, and you're looking for a lot of movement, you're going to vary your leader depending on a lot of things that are going on. For example, how fast are you drifting? How much water movement you have? How active you're moving your cork? Because of the harder you work the cork, the more time your bait's going to be up high. The more time you let your cork sit, farther down your bait goes. So you're also going to find too that sometimes fish bite better earlier up high. Sometimes they like it down deep as the sun gets up later in the day. So usually you want to, you like to start, if you're in five feet of water, we start with this and we go from there. If you get out in 10 feet of water, okay, again, you might go to three or four feet, but you really don't ever go deeper than that from what we've learned out here because it's too hard to cast and that's a lot of line to be out there helicopter casting. So once again, piece of 40, hard leader material, 15 to 18 inches on the top to your heavy duty swivel. Piece of 60, hard leader material, anywhere from 18 inches if you're up shallow to no more than three or four feet if you're out deep, all right? Tied to a jig head of your choosing. Out here, again, hooks are big, leads are big because you're casting far, fish are big, you want it to get down, and then we, this particular one here is, is paired up with our own Slam Shady made by Z-Man, which is amazing plastic bait, good to catch a few fish on it before they get tore up. So the longevity on these worms is pretty impressive as with all Z-Man, but the Slam Shady is unique with its color pattern, and uh, that's all there is to it. So what happens when you're not in Venice, Louisiana, and you're targeting normal redfish, all right? So you fish the same cork, you can fish a lighter cork if you want. You can downsize your leader, okay? Let's say if you're fishing 10 pound, maybe you make this 20, okay? Maybe your leader here is 20, maybe it's 30. Whether you're trout fishing, red fishing, whatever you're doing, you can downsize your leader. You can fish live bait on the bottom, a chunk bait on the end. You can do a lot of different things with it. Plastic, okay? So the tackle, is matched to the fish you're after. Out here in Venice, and the bull reds, we're averaging between 15 and 40 pounds. We're fishing 20 pound braid on a size 4,000 spinning reel, and they pull. So you wanna rig accordingly. Again, out here, piece of 40, piece of 60. Back home in Florida, when I'm fishing for snooks or redfish, and the redfish are much smaller, I might fish 20 here and 20 on the bottom. If the water's clean, obviously you can downscale and use fluorocarbon. Whatever you need to do to match your environment, you can get away with downscaling, but you can utilize the same corks that we use out here for the big bulls. All right, final thing, when you're rigging up, as you do with any of your tackle, the most important piece is the connection. All right, knots are everything. These knots that I tie is your everyday fisherman knot, clinch knot, seven turns in a loop. You wanna make sure you wet it, you pull it tight. You always pull your tag in tight and remember, everybody to leave a little bit of tag end left and that big fish is pulling and this really cinches down. The last thing you want to do is have a knot slip, right? And the funny thing about knots is there are a million knots on the market. There are knots that'll keep you up at night. But if you learn to tie a basic handful of knots, we find that we use the same knot here, same knot here, same knot here. Yes, a different knot here, okay? This is a no-name knot. It's a great way to connect your mono to your braid, it's very slim and it slides right through your guides. But outside of this one, these three knots, these three connections are all the same. So out here in the bayou, we have so much fun fishing. I enjoy being out here all summer and into the fall. And I will tell you, popping cork fishing for big bull reds is just as fun as it gets. We've caught fish this year already in the mid thirties. 
We're all trying to see every year if we can get to the 40 pound mark. We're fishing 20 pound spin gear and it is just as fun as it gets. Makes me want to come back every year. If you have any questions fishing with popping corks, feel free to give us a call or look us up on saltstrong.com. Captain Mark Johnson, AKA Hollywood, and we will help you get your popping cork freak on and catch you some big bull reds out here in the bayou.